Hey guys, Brett here with Springport WealthInc, and we're spearheading a wealth movement where ordinary people get to lead extraordinary lives through real estate investing. And it's our mission to help you do the same. Thanks for joining me. Today we have a tutorial that will help you come up with an accurate ARV or after repair value for a property that you're looking to either flip or hold after renovations are complete. Now whether intentional or unintentional, sometimes you can get inaccurate information from a third party service provider like a general contractor, realtor, or your mortgage broker if they're not very investment savvy. And this will help you analyze the project for yourself and gain absolute confidence in the deal instead of just hearsay. So I hope you find the information helpful. And as always, I'd be greatly honored if you like and subscribe, if you so choose. Now that that's out of the way, let's get to it. Hey guys, on this tutorial, we'll be covering how to obtain an accurate ARV based on the comps that your realtor has sent you. Uh, so keep in mind what this is for is so let's say you're looking at a property to flip the realtor has sent you some comparables they've come up with what they believe the property will sell for when it's done and this is just your next extra step of due diligence to uh, check his or her work and come up with your own numbers based on what you know uh, again knowledge is power so the more you know about this process the better equipped you'll be and the more confident you'll be in the project itself okay so this assumes a few key metrics so keep that in mind this comes into play once you're say looking to make an offer and you're trying to come up with what you think the property will sell for when it's finished being renovated your after repair value okay so a few key metrics first of all it must be a recent or sold property whenever possible uh, because the markets can will and do change so you want to always, always want to make sure that you're getting recent and sold uh, comparables you don't want to get something from a year ago uh, unless it's part of a larger data pool it's a, it's a unique property and you can't get any other data to pull from that's the only time but most of the time 99 percent of the time you want to get recent and sold data okay then you want to make sure that the comps that you're getting are obviously within the same community and the, some, the same property type. This sometimes does get looked over slightly uh, and it has different various variances in value. But you want to make sure you're comparing two-story to two-story bungalow to bungalow, townhouse to townhouse, etc. This comes more into play between two-story and a bungalow because builders put more value on a bungalow um, than sometimes a home buyer will uh, because building a bungalow usually means the square footage of the basement it's a little larger which means the price is a little higher because you have to pour more concrete for the basement again we're in canada so usually we build uh, basements below the frost line which require a lot of concrete okay another thing to look at the next metric once you have all this in place then you can look at the individual data points of each property which is size like single family home and this will differ uh, for various property types, but you want to be uh, within about 100 square feet plus or minus from the subject property based on the type of properties that you usually look at when you're flipping homes. And usually the bread and butter is a single family home between 1,000 to 1,500 square feet. Um, and usually anything within 100 square feet bigger or smaller will be considered the same. Obviously, if you're looking at a condo and the condo is say 600 square feet, then you want to be within 50 to say 25 square feet uh, to be considered a comparable property. Next is the bed and bath combo. And this value again is also market dependent. So in some, pro in some markets, a bedroom can be worth 10 to 15,000, sometimes even 7,500 give or take but then if you're in one of those markets uh, i know a lot of markets maybe in, in the u.s you can buy a home for like a hundred thousand dollars and maybe there your uh, bedroom value would be a little bit lower so just keep in mind there's a sliding scale depending on the market that you're um, occupying all right another key metric that gets looked over a lot and it's very important actually is days on market what this tells you is if the product or the property was priced uh, a little high or a little low. This is another uh, key data point that you can plug in to give you the big picture of the property. You know, if the property was um, 
well done and fully renovated per se, but it's sold in a day, it tells you, oh, you probably could have got a little bit more for it um, based on the days on market. All right. So keep that metric in mind as well. The next metric is the basement status. Is it unfinished? Is it finished? And if it is finished, is it suited? So that's another metric you want to look at. Parking. What is the parking situation at the property? Is there no parking and only street parking? Is there a driveway with just a carport, for example? Is there a detached uh, garage? And is there a front attached garage? Usually the higher value is placed on the attached garage for single family homes okay, uh, based on the eyes of the buyer. All right. Next thing is the property condition itself. Is it a handyman special? Does it need some uh, tender love and care? Uh, does it need some renovations? Uh, that's something to keep in mind. Is it well kept? Now, this is the largest sliding scale when it comes to value of a in condition of the property because it can be a 20 year old home that's well kept that has just never been renovated and it's relatively clean condition uh, or there can be properties that are of the same age but they've only renovated a few bathrooms uh, but the kitchen is still original and then there could be another property right next door where everything's the same but they updated and spent all this money on a kitchen so uh, there's a large sliding scale in value of condition uh, in the in around this range so keep that in mind and the next thing type of property condition is either is uh, renovated or new build and these would usually be somewhat considered somewhat the same okay then once you have all these metrics down from here down what you want to do next is pick out of the comparables, pick the most similar property to yours and then adjust positively or negatively based on the comparable property that you're using. Example, if all things are the same, you have your subject property and you've picked the closest uh, comparable property and it's the same square feet, same community, bed and bath combo is the same, basement status is the same. Um, but there's a slight difference in parking, meaning the property that you're looking at buying has a front attached garage, but the closest comparable property to yours that has all of the other metrics being very similar, there's one difference in that it has a detached garage. An attached garage usually has a little bit more value in the eyes of the buyer um, than a detached garage. So you would value yours a little bit higher. So what you do is you always adjust the value on your subject property plus or minus on the sliding scale scale as you go through this. So you have your property, have the comparable property and you go through each of these metrics, plus a little, minus a little, plus a little, plus a little, minus a little and so forth, so forth until you get to your final uh, number. All right. So what we'll do is we'll look at a nice simple uh, example of how this works in the real world and what we've done is we've chose relatively simple cookie cutter style homes just to make it easy for the purpose of this tutorial uh, we kind of went to suburban neighborhoods um, where there's a lot of product to choose from uh, the variances in the housing types aren't different um, this will always be different depending on the market but for the purpose of this tutorial we chose to go with, uh, this kind of a property okay so basically what we're going to look at uh, is a community here called Saddle Ridge we're in Calgary in Canada so there's a community here called Saddle Ridge and there are older and newer homes there are still newer homes being built um, and then older new older homes uh, as well um, now this property is active so we'll start with the metrics here active property the style is a two-story and it's in community called Saddle Ridge and we know that it's active listed for 584 okay so now we get into the data metrics the numbers themselves so this property has four bedrooms and four and a half baths okay so uh, this means above ground and total so four above ground bedrooms total there are four so that tells you that the basement typically is unfinished if there was a number here on the other on this side um, say one it means it would mean there was one bedroom in the basement okay so it's a four bed four and a half bath and then here is a square feet right here so 2500 square feet 2535 to be exact so immediately you know it's a two-story 20, 2,500 square foot home with four beds and four and a half baths. Okay. It's listed for 
584. Days on market is 58. The next metric is the basement. And the basement here, it says it's full basement. Uh, it's not just a crawl space. That's what it means when it says that. And it's uh, unfinished. And there's a walkout. So there's some value in it as far as it being a walkout, but not much because it's unfinished. Okay. Then the parking situation, double garage attached with two parking spots. Okay. So basically this is how you come up with the metrics of your specific property and the subject property itself. So now we want to look at a couple of comparables here and we have uh, three. You always want to try to get three uh, to five and work your way down until you find the one that's the most similar. That's the idea here. Okay. So this property, uh, two story, same community Saddle Ridge. It's sold, sold for 595. It took 56 days to sell for 595. It started at 685. Okay. Next thing you want to look at is now the data itself. Now this is a four bed with two total. So that means most likely there is a ba finished basement with two bedrooms downstairs. See here, basement, full, fully finished. So there you go. Then it has four full bathrooms. Square feet, almost identical. So this is relatively close. Now this property uh, would be immediately right now, based on the data at this point, valued a little bit higher than our subject property, okay? So, and again, right now we're looking at numbers only. Uh, and tells you right here, parking. Five spots, double garage attached, okay? Now, it's a relatively little bit older, but would still be considered new. Uh, again, if this was a flip and you're looking at older properties, then you'd wanna go back to your subject property even though you're basing your decisions right now on numbers first, you know, you still want to look at the pictures, obviously. But this, because it's a new home, uh, we know that it's uh, going to be pretty in relatively good condition. So look, the finishes are new. You know, there's no appliances yet, but it's a new home. Uh, nice new finishes uh, and so forth. Okay. So this is the subject property. Here is the first comparable we're looking at. Uh, 2012, not very old. Uh, you would think that the finishes would still be well kept, uh, would maybe just need a good cleaning, uh, that kind of thing. Okay. So this is what you, the information you can gather from this property and it's 2012. And, uh, again, we, the last, where we picked up, where we will pick up from is that there's a, uh, double dot garage attached. So it should bear to mind that this property should be a, valued a little bit higher than our subject property because of the two extra bedrooms in the basement and the basement itself being finished, okay? So we should immediately know that mm, 595 would be on the higher end for our, our subject property, okay? So it's not priced unreasonably at this point from what we see. Now you go to the next property. And this one here, um, it's a brand new build, 2019, but it hey, it's a two story in the same community, sold for 575, took 34 days to sell. So uh, that tells you in this market, it was not unreasonably priced. Originally it was offered at 599, okay? Uh, 2019, so it should be brand new finishes and you can have a look at the pictures just to confirm. And it shows that yes, it's a brand new build, nice new finishes and so forth, okay? Um, now you want to look at the data. Remember, you want to look at numbers first. Uh, it's different if it's an older house, then you want to really dig into some of the pictures, but you always want to go numbers first. Okay. So right now it tells us it's a four bed, no additional bedrooms, four full bathrooms. So immediately it's very similar. Just our property would, does have one extra half bath. Okay, so it might need to be a little bit higher valued than this property. So uh, square feet, very, very similar. Uh, would be within the range to say it's the same square feet. Uh, full basement, but it's unfinished. Uh, four double garage attached. So this looks very, very, very similar to our property. Okay, so square feet, 
uh, we just have an extra bathroom, half bath. That's uh, a front attached garage. So right now, compared to the two properties we've looked at, based on these two, uh, this is the subject property that would be the most, the closest that bears the most likeness and resemblance. Okay. And uh, again, sold for 575 originally offered at 599 so right now i would say this is probably the closest one that we have next thing you want to look at is uh, the, the third property uh 2019 so it's a new build two-story same community 56 days uh, but this one sold for 542 so you want to look at why uh, even the original offer price was uh, substantially lower okay so immediately you want to start digging and finding out why this property itself um was uh, valued and sold lower than the other two comparables that we looked at okay so you want to take a quick look at the pictures you know that it's a brand new home so the finishes should be well done there's a, a side entrance which does help um, but the finishes should be well done especially since it's being brand new and yeah it, it is uh, it's not um, in bad condition at all so now you want to look at the data itself so it's a uh, four bed so that's the same and here is the uh, smoking gun if you want to call it that so it only has two full bathrooms and one half bath so immediately you can see why it was uh, valued lower uh, the next item that you should jump out at you is the square footage um, plus or minus you know around about a hundred would feel the same in the eyes of a buyer but right here when you get to this kind of a difference it starts feeling smaller uh, when you're walking around the property even though you can be very creative with your layouts um, but there's no way around it this is this will feel smaller okay so this tells you why um, you know and depending on where you are but us being a builder as well um, and working on these kind of properties we know that in, in this community um, a full bedroom can add or minus uh, give or take between 7,500 to 12,000 or so uh, per bedroom Okay, so let's just average it out and say they've lost about 20,000 here uh, for the for not having the two bedrooms. Um, and then square footage, they lo they've lost a lot as well. So this kind of tells you why it, it, it's substantially lower than the other two properties, 20 to 25,000, give or take. Uh, and that easily explains that away, uh, even though all the other metrics are the same. Okay, so it tells me that this would be on the lower end of what our property would and should sell for so what you want to do then is go to the closest property that matches the subject property of yours which is this one which is the second one we looked at in this tutorial the one that sold for 575 because when you go through all of these metrics the only real difference the only real tangible difference is this the half bathroom okay so that tells me that our subject property all things being equal should be valued around 5,000 or so give or take more than the closest comparable property and that tells me we should be at around the 580 mark and this is how you narrow these things down okay so they are not being unreasonable in their pricing they feel that it should sell for around the five 80 mark they're giving themselves some negotiating room in this market uh, every market's a little different but in this market the homes are selling at about 98 percent or so give or take of list price um, other markets where you know it's it's just hot you don't need to really do much to show the property uh, you know it's a buyer's market uh, they will sell they can sell for a little more but in this market where we are uh, you need to be a little bit more savvy in your pricing and presentation so 580 should be the final selling price they're not too far off um, you know give or take and this is why they priced it uh, where they did so this is basically how you come up with uh, a final after repair market value on your subject property once your realtor sends you his comparables and his recommendations on pricing okay so i hope this helps you guys um, because this is a key metric in reverse engineering each specific project and property type whether it's going to be even if you're doing it for a buy and hold the bank uh, they're going to 
basically base it on the after repair value as well. They're going to use a few little different extra um, metrics like there's a, a house pricing index. We won't get into that here um, the, uh, uh, to help with the pricing of what the bank uses. But for you, this will give you a range of what the property should sell for. Okay, so just a quick recap on how to, how to obtain it. It needs to be recent and sold. Same community and property type. Size is a factor. Bed and bath is a factor. Days on market is another key metric. Basement status is a factor. Parking is a factor and property condition. Then once you have your subject property and the most closest similar subject property is very rare you find two exact same. But if you get the project that property that's closest to yours and then you plus or minus depending on uh, an inferior or superior metric. All right. So I hope this helps you guys and gets you all on your way to accurately obtaining your next uh, after repair value for your next uh, investment property. All right, guys. Thanks so much and happy investing.